It is my pleasure to participate in this event, celebrating the 11th edition of the Diplomacy Festival in Rome. I'd like to thank His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Sultan bin Abdulaziz, His Majesty's Ambassador to Rome, and Dr. Giorgio Bartolomucci, the Secretary General of the Diplomacy Festival. For this opportunity, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's participation as a guest of honor this year reflects the importance of multilateral diplomacy and the efforts taken by Saudi Arabia, especially during the difficult circumstances the world faces today. Saudi Arabia values its partnership with the United Nations and international organizations and groups. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia strongly believes in the power of global cooperation and multilateralism to achieve mutually beneficial solutions, face challenges and create opportunities for all people and countries. This is clearly embraced in Saudi Arabia's G20 presidency theme, realizing opportunities of the 21st century for all. We take pride in being the first Arab country to host the G20, but also by being the presidency that will be remembered for taking decisive and immediate action to mitigate the impact of the COVID-19 epidemic, to protest, to protect people's lives and livelihoods, preserve and safeguard the planet and harness the potential of innovation to shape new frontiers. <clears throat> Building on the important legacy of previous years, the Saudi G20 presidency sought to deepen global cooperation around the theme. The presidency is working with G20 members on three essential pillars, which are vital to the world's success. First, empowering people by creating the conditions in which all people, especially women and youth, can live, work, and thrive. Second, safeguarding the planet by fostering collective efforts to protect our natural resources. And third, shaping new frontiers by adopting long-term and bold strategies to share the benefits of innovation and technological advancement. At the breakout of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Saudi presidency adapted its original agenda to consider the new realities. We added several priorities to our baseline agenda and adjusted other priorities to address this global challenge, including the immediate response to the COVID-19 pandemic. <coughs> The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia G20 presidency is committed towards its continuing work al <clears throat> along with G20 and in line with this commitment. And in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, the G20 presidency and G20 partners have been working collectively to combat the effects of COVID-19 and to ensure restoring growth and recovery at a global le level. During the extraordinary G20 Leaders Summit convened by the Saudi G20 Presidency in March 26, 2020, the G20 leaders made a decisive commitment to fight the pandemic and called for the provision of immediate resources in order to protect lives, livelihoods, economies, and the most vulnerable. The G20 members and invited countries pledged over 2.1 billion US dollars to support funding in global health. Saudi Arabia on its own pledged $500 million to support global efforts in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. G20 members have injected around $11 billion into the global economy to counteract social, economic, and financial impacts of the pandemic. 
Developing and low-income countries, especially those with high debt levels and dependence on hard-hit sectors such as tourism, are struggling the most to access the markets. The G20 launched a debt suspension initiative for the least developed countries that would allow beneficiary countries to defer $14 billion in debt payment due this year and the next year and use these amounts instead for financing their health systems and social programs. <clears throat> the G20 members have stated their commitment to strengthening their own pandemic preparedness and develop an international long-term plan to improve pandemic preparedness throughout the world. Saudi Arabia, as the holder of the G20 presidency, continues to strongly push for collective action from G20 partners and the international community to force the way forward to realize the opportunities of the 21st century for all. The G20 is also working on unleashing access to financial opportunities for all, including women and youth, accelerating digitalization and constructively to ensure the continuity of business in global crisis and stabilizing the labor market, especially for the most vulnerable groups. Furthermore, the G20 continues its work to safeguard the planet for current and future generations by promoting climate adaptation protecting natural resources, and financing sustainable development. G20 2020 facts and figures under Saudi presidency, extraordinary leader summit, 20 plus ministerial declarations agreed, 14 extraordinary ministerial meetings hosted, 17 meetings hosted by the presidency. 11 trillion injections into the economy to protect jobs, lives and livelihood, safeguard the economy and mitigate the impact of the pandemic. $21 billion contribution by G20 members to support the development, distribution and access to diagnostic therapeutic and vaccines. 14 billion to debt relief services dedicated to support the developing countries in the fight against COVID-19. 60 strategic outcomes endorsed by the G20 members. United response against global health threats and combating the COVID-19. Acknowledging that the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic is a powerful reminder of our interconnectedness and vulnerabilities as the virus respects no borders, Saudi Arabia continues the efforts to tackle the pandemic on its belief, based on its belief in the power of collective cooperation to face global threats. On the basis of that foundation, Saudi Arabia initiated and drafted the General Assembly resolution titled United Response Against Global Health Threats Combating COVID-19, which was adopted by 122 countries with no objection whatsoever. The main objectives of the resolution are to emphasize the need for the United Nations system, as well as relevant or regional and international organizations and financial institutions to collaborate in order to ensure that the adverse social, economic, humanitarian, and financial impacts of COVID-19 are addressed in a timely 
and non-discriminatory manner. Number two, emphasizes the need for full respect for human rights and stresses further that there is no place for any form of discrimination, racism, and xenophobia in the response to the pandemic. Number three, stresses the necessity of urgent short-term actions to step up the global efforts to fight global health crises and pandemics and maintain economic stability, including by taking the following steps. A, swift delivery of medical supplies, especially diagnostic tools, treatment, medicine, and vaccines. B, increasing research and development funding for vaccines and medicines, leveraging digital technologies and strengthening scientific international cooperation. C, expanding manufacturing capacity in order to meet the increasing needs for medical supplies and ensuring that these are made widely available. D, engaging with the frontline international organizations, notably the United Nations, the World Health Organization, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank Group, and multilateral and regional development banks to develop robust, coherent, coordinated, and rapid financial packages to strengthen global financial safety nets. Finally, reaffirms the necessity to support eco economies, protect workers, businesses, especially micro and small and medium-sized enterprises and the sectors most affected and shield the vulnerable through adequate social protection. In conclusion, the increase of global challenges we face today, such as security and economic threats, occupation, discrimination, racism, xenophobia, and Islamophobia, are strong reminders for the need to promote global cooperation in order to ensure that these challenges are addressed in a timely and non-discriminatory manner. Vulnerable people around the world, particularly the elderly, women and girls, displaced persons and refugees, and persons with disabilities, and areas that are most vulnerable should be given priority by international communities to end their suffering. Saudi Arabia will continue to demonstrate its commitment to the United Nations and to the international community and will continue to promote the collective work in order to address global challenges and maintain peace and stability. Thank you.